Now that my boards are all cut to width and all the edges are jointed, I'm going to mark the locations for my biscuits. Now you don't need to use biscuits when you glue up a tabletop. The long grain glue joint is plenty strong for this thing's lifetime. Uh, but using biscuits in a case like this keeps everything aligned for me. So if there is a little bit of a bow here or if one of the boards wants to lift up, it keeps them aligned using the top as your reference point. So it'll be as flat as possible, making my life a whole lot easier after this thing dries, the glue's dry, and then it's time to sand it down. Uh, so I'm going to start marking my locations. Usually in a case like this, I like to put one near the end. Then go in, you know, maybe 16, 18 inches. And I really only want four, really no more than four per board. Any more than that's kind of overkill. I already have my boards in the order that I like, so I number them to avoid any mix-ups later. Now it's time to create my biscuit slots. I line up the biscuit joiner with the pencil marks and plunge. I highly recommend a good dust extraction system for this operation. Since the boards are so large, I'm able to make my slots without clamping the board down, but for added safety, clamps are always a good idea. I decided to glue up my top in two halves. This makes the project quite a bit easier to manage. Now I place each board on end, add glue to the edge and the slots, and spread the glue with my roller. Next, I add a number 20 biscuit to each slot. I also add glue to the other edges of the middle boards. No need for biscuits here since the adjoining boards already have biscuits. And yes, I have made that mistake in the past. We're now ready to clamp the boards together. All I really need to do is make sure my pencil marks line up and the joints look tight. This is where biscuits really prove their worth. We aren't really counting on them for added strength here. Rather, they're making sure our boards are properly aligned. Now since the biscuits were all cut using the top of the boards as a reference, everything should line up nicely. If you do have a particularly stubborn area that wants to stick up, don't be afraid to use a clamp to force it into position. Other options you could use if you don't have a biscuit joiner would be dowels or long splines cut with a router. I add a few extra clamps for good measure. I find the best way to remove squeeze out is to wait about 30 minutes after the glue up and scrape it away. Look ma, no stain inhibiting residue. I followed the exact same glue up procedure for the second half of the tabletop, and after about two hours, it's time to glue the two halves together. I add a few extra clamps and let the tabletop sit overnight. The next day, I remove any high spots using a number 80 cabinet scraper. This tool excels at this job and is far more effective than a sander. I then go over the entire table with my random orbit sander. I start with 120 grit and finish up with 180 grit. I do this to both sides as well as the edges of the table. Now I've selected my boards for the long aprons here and I'm about to give them a quick cut to bring them down to length. Uh, it's always a good idea to cut your long pieces first because the cutoffs from those cuts may actually serve as our smaller pieces. So for instance, the slats and the side aprons themselves, I'm actually going to use the cutoffs from the tabletop and even the ones from the long aprons and use those for our smaller pieces. Just a much more efficient way to go. I rough cut my apron stock and side slat stock at the chop saw. It's always a good idea to let the blade come to a complete stop before returning it to its starting position. After jointing, planing, and ripping them to width, I trim one end of each piece square with my miter gauge. Using a stop block, I batch cut each piece to the appropriate length. Okay, now that all of our parts are cut, let's just do a quick recap and make sure we have everything we need. We've got our eight slats. These guys are 16 and a quarter inches long by three inches wide by a half inch thick. I've got four side aprons for top and bottom. We haven't cut the arc in this yet, we will. Uh, these guys are 28 inches long by three and a half wide by three quarters of an inch thick. In fact, they're a little bit over three quarters of an inch. I was able to maintain a little extra thickness and when you can, you may as well. It just makes everything sturdier and heavier. Our long aprons are 64 inches long 
Uh, they are three and a half inches wide, and again, three quarters, or in this case, just over three quarters of an inch thick. And our four legs. These guys are three by three, and they are actually 29 and a quarter inches long. All right, so let's talk a little bit about our joinery options. We have to find some way of attaching our aprons to our table legs. Uh, the easiest and probably the most common thing to do in this scenario is a mortise and tenon. And we already know that there's a couple different types. So either the loose mortise and tenon or an integral mortise and tenon would be the way to go. Now keep in mind though, the pieces that I've cut now, they're cut at exactly the distance that I want between my legs. So what I'm counting on is a loose tenon style construction. If you're gonna do an integral tenon, you need a little bit more length on your pieces. So your long aprons, instead of 64, add three inches, they're gonna be 67. And your short aprons, instead of being 28, those guys are gonna be 31. And what that does is it gives you an opportunity to have an inch and a half tenon on either side. And just as an FYI, if you are gonna do the integral tenons, uh, my recommendation is to go an inch and a half long on the tenon, three inches wide, and three eighths of an inch thick. Now I know I mentioned that I'm gonna do a loose tenon construction, but actually what I'm doing is using the Festool Domino. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have access to it and I really wanna give it a workout just to see how it handles this type of application. Uh, what I would recommend for you guys is probably the integral tenon. So you can do a loose tenon and actually uh, putting a mortise in your short aprons really isn't gonna to be too difficult. In fact, just to show you real quick, I would probably just put it in my bench and I would make sure that the end is flush with the surface of my bench, okay? And use a straight edge to, to confirm that. And then with your router and your router guide, you can actually very easily and safely cut yourself a mortise in here for loose tenon construction. But when you've got a 64 inch apron, it's a little dicier figuring out how to put a mortise into the end of this board. Now you can do it, and if you were gonna do it, and you were determined that that's how you wanted this joinery to be, I would clamp it into the bench and I would grab several boards or, or a couple nice thick boards and I would clamp them uh, to both sides of this piece to give you a nice wide base at the top for the router to ride on. It's not really the safest thing to do, so honestly I think the integral tenon for the average person is gonna be the best way to go. Now when installing slats into an apron like this, I find it easier to insert the entire slat into a mortise that's cut perfectly sized for that piece, but it can be a little bit tricky. So you may wanna consider going with a smaller mortise and creating a little baby tenon on here so that you have the advantage of that shoulder. And that shoulder is gonna give you a little bit of a cleaner appearance. Um, if, you're, if you're having problems with your accuracy and your holes for your mortises are a little bit off, maybe you slipped with the router uh, or your uh, chisel, hollow chisel mortiser may not have been aligned perfectly, that might be something you want to consider. Uh, but if you're, if you're pretty well um, you know, comfortable with those things, you should be able to make a nice clean mortise and these pieces should sit right down inside them and that actually simplifies the process for you. And just a quick note, although I cut mine at 16 and a quarter, because that's the exact distance I want between that top and bottom side rail. Uh... Okay, so I messed up. If you want integral tenons on your side slats, cut them to 18 and a quarter inches long instead of 16 and a quarter, which is what's listed in the plan. That gives you a one inch tenon on each side. To make the mortises in my aprons using the domino, I simply place two pencil marks on my workpiece one inch in from each end. And with the piece securely clamped, I line up the domino with my pencil marks and slowly plunge. And like all tools from Festool, the domino was a delight to use. Now to be perfectly honest, Domino shaved off about a full day for my building schedule. And when time is money, a full day is a very big deal. Now before you cut your mortises into your legs, it's very important to keep your legs organized. Sometimes there's a distinct grain pattern that you want to see, and keep in mind the rear right leg is not going to be as visible as the front right leg. So when you're selecting the grain and the faces you like the most, keep that in mind. Um, what I usually do is I mark on the top of the leg in a spot that's never going to be seen. In this case, this is rear right, so I put RR, and I'll put uh, for the front, it'll be FR. And this way I can always keep them straight. So when I start drawing on the locations of my mortises, I can have my orientation and my frame of mind is in the right spot and I won't make a mistake that way. 
To make the mortises of my leg stock, I simply transfer the pencil marks from the previous operation. I then extend the lines using my adjustable square. After raising the domino's fence a half inch, which will give us the half inch reveal that we're after, I make the matching mortises in the leg stock. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Now I know I use the domino to create my mortises, but most of you won't have the domino as an option until April when the tool is released. So regardless of whether you plan on doing a loose tenon joint or the integral tenon joint, you're going to need to put mortises in your legs. So I recommend drawing the mortise location out on the actual leg pieces. And whether you use a router or a hollow chisel mortiser, these guidelines will help to ensure your accuracy. I recommend making your mortise 11 sixteenths in from the outside edge of the leg. The mortise itself should be 3 eighths of an inch wide, 3 inches long, and 1 and a half inches deep. 